Hello everybody, Timothy Bailey with Project Learn and our video for today. Today we're going to look at some foreign words in English. English has a lot of words that come from other languages that are, well, they're so frequently used, so popular, um, they're pretty much everyday English words now. A simple breakdown uh, might look something like this, so a lot of uh, our words come from Latin, and some language related to French, right? Uh, you see Anglo, French, and French here, as well as uh, the different Germanic languages. So Dutch and Norse and Old and Middle English, right? Thrown into this related possibly might be Spanish. That's a, another huge uh, language where English words uh, have come from. Then we have Greek and some other languages. And then actually uh, a lot of words that come from people's names. Uh, things like Miller and Smith, uh, and we might look at those another day. So we're going to start, we're going to look at uh, some of these today. And this chart here, this comes from this website down here at the bottom. Let's look at Latin. There are a lot of them. In fact, if you were going to learn a language that was helpful to you for English learning as well, Latin would be the language. The only problem is, is it's not a living language. What that means is, other than people who have learned it, professors and such, cultures around the world do not speak Latin. It is a dead language. However, as you can see here, some of these probably look familiar. And here's the website for this one as well. We got words like villa, right? And here's what it means, right? So house, right? Also by itself, just villa. We have village and villager. We do use the word villa sometimes, uh, and it might mean a special house uh, used on vacation or something uh, that people are staying in. We don't use it as much in uh, English, at least in American English. Right? Another word, this longa in Latin, right? Obviously it looks like long, so we have that word. But we also have the related words longitude, and longevity, right? So again, learning these as part of our other longer English words is also very helpful. Magna, large or great. We have magnify, to make bigger, magnificent, great, magnitude, okay? Right? We use this one for earthquakes, so the level of the earthquake, how large, how great it is. You can see how these start to really uh, come together, right? Prima meaning first, prime, primary, primitive, primeval, right? All having to do somehow with something uh, that is first or in the first place. My primary concern, my number one concern, primitive peoples, peoples that came before uh, our more recent ancestors. Sub, right? Under, and you know this when you see words like subway, the train that goes under, subterranean, underground, right? Suburban, a little bit different here uh, because it's not so much under as it is uh, outside of, right, something. Down here we have the word via, and I skipped it. Down here at the bottom we have the word via which the technical Latin definition is for street, but we actually do mean it via, right? I went to school uh, via 12th Street. What does that mean is I mean I took 12th Street. So whenever we're using this word, it means by way of something else. Okay, so via. Some French words. You might see this word uh, different places. This is the word cafe. You might also see it written in the more traditional French way with the accent here. Cafe, right? Uh, and in French, it means coffee. And some cultures will still use this. Other cultures, right, when they incorporate uh, foreign words, will refer to coffee as cafe. In American English, at least, it tends to refer to a, a small restaurant, okay? Uh, where you can get perhaps simple foods, not very complex foods, not a very large restaurant. Another French word is this wonderful uh, pastry, 
baked good. In English, we would refer to this as a croissant. In French, it would be something uh, more like croissant, right? So the change in how it is pronounced. And the number one difference really, uh, there's two big differences for foreign words coming into English. One, the pronunciation often changes. We'll see some examples of that. Uh, and the spelling will at times change as well. Another French word. This is a Chinese buffet, right? In this time in American English, right? A buffet, right? Uh, British English would pronounce it a buffet, right? So the restaurant you go to where you can get all the food you want, you pay one price and you get food, you eat it, then you can go back and get more, right, of this food. So a buffet. Right. I don't know in American English, uh, but certainly other pronunciations you might hear buffet. Right. Uh, I, I, I don't recall hearing that uh, in any of my sort of around Ohio English. Uh, so it tends to always be buffet here. Some Spanish words. Right. Here is a section of town, a town square, perhaps. Looks like they're having... Uh, maybe vendors selling things, people selling food, uh, maybe some music here. Uh, so a lot of stuff going on. Well, this is called a plaza, right? Plaza, typically in American English with the ah sound, right? And plaza, right, sometimes just means square, right? We often call it a town square, for example, right? Many towns historically have had a square in the downtown where all the events took place. We also have shopping plazas or business plazas, right? So you might see this word a lot uh, to refer to just one sort of organized area. Now, Spanish has a lot of words. I just have some animals and some arts and culture. Here's our plaza down here. We also have fiesta, meaning party, bodega. Bodega can also refer to a small store, right? Then different animals here, right? Alligator comes from these two Spanish words meaning the lizard. And you can see, right, different Spanish words and where they come from. There's the website if you want to check that out some more. <coughs> Excuse me. Some German words. This is a famous delicatessen in New York City, Katz's Delicatessen. All right, and I don't know if you can see it here, uh, but it says Frankenfurters here, right? It looks sort of like a diner, a small restaurant, which is what it is, right? You might also see it abbreviated as a deli. And what might you find there? Well, in large cities, certainly like New York, you might find something like this, a Reuben, a special kind of sandwich. You might also be able to buy the meat and cheese and things in this deli. So delis could be both a restaurant and a kind of store. A kind of store where you might find um, sort of fancier meats and cheeses and things like olives. Now also the deli is a section in a regular just grocery store uh, where you might buy meats and things like that as well. Here you see a group of kids, right? These kids are in a special class after preschool, before first grade, we call kindergarten. And the two German words here, kinder means children, and garten means garden. So kindergarten means children's garden. Right? The only difference here when we are saying it in English is the T right, uh, gets a D sound, kindergarten. Right? So this might cause you to have trouble figuring out how to spell the word. From Dutch, right? Here we have some chocolate chip cookies, right? In Dutch, the word uh, comes from, the word that cookies comes from means uh, small or little cakes, right? Which is really what cookies are. Yiddish, Yiddish is a, a language spoken by uh, Eastern European uh, Jews. And we have a word here, glitch, right, glitch. You can see the TV mostly works 
except this small glitch here. So you could watch a TV show, you could watch a movie, it's just this small section is interfered with. So a glitch is um, a small problem that doesn't prevent you from doing something, right? You could watch a TV show, you could watch a movie, even though this here is sort of a problem. Japanese, right? So we don't get a lot of words, not as much as French or uh, German or Spanish uh, from our Asian languages, but we do get some Japanese. If you go to a bar and you are singing up front here and people are listening, this is called karaoke. Karaoke. And it comes from two different uh, Japanese words, sort of empty and orchestra, right? Uh, so if you think about the music that the orchestra might play being absent, being empty, you are filling in the music. That sort of seems like where the idea uh, comes from. The only difference here is that typically in the United States we are singing in a place that is public, whereas some Asian countries you are singing in a private room uh, and you know the people, their family or friends, right? So the performance is different for that one. A word from Chinese. So we have a wonderful dish here. This is a, a food that comes from soybeans. So they're sort of smashed up and put together and you cut them into cubes. Here's how we spell it. In, in English, we would say tofu. In Chinese, the T would have a D sound. So dofu, right? Arabic also has a lot of words uh, that we have borrowed uh, for English. Here is just one of them. What is it? It is a lemon, right? A lemon. So as you can see, uh, speaking English, you're actually speaking quite a few languages, even though we might change the pronunciation or the spelling. Here are a couple websites with more and more, a lot of the words that we have in English that come from other languages. I hope this was interesting. Next time you're learning a new word, check out in your dictionary where that word comes from. You might be surprised. Thank you and have a great day.